guys. <clears throat> I don't know if uh, any of you guys are actually going to jump in and see this live, but if you do, you can ask me uh, questions today. Uh, this is the first time trying this, so kind of trying to give it a whirl here, see what happens. Um, today, I just want to talk to you about the ideas on how we're going to get to uh, $300,000 this year. Um, I'm sitting here at the Flying J in Withville, Virginia, heading up to uh, Bell Camp, Maryland, to go load up today. But uh, I don't know. Uh, I, I don't really know how to say this or, or do this. So just stick with me. But uh, yeah, we're going to uh, we're going to be heading up to uh, Bell Camp to load up today. Uh, come back. We'll be back tomorrow afternoon, which will be Saturday. But yeah, I just wanted to talk to you guys about uh, getting to three hundred thousand dollars this year. Um, we started with five thousand. We're slowly making our way up there. Um, now we're just waiting for a couple people to pay so I can update you on uh, how the bank account's starting to look. But uh, what we're going to do is my idea is I got to get up to probably about twenty, twenty-five thousand dollars $25,000 in the account. And then we're going to hire on at least one owner operator. Um, somebody that's got their own truck that wants to, wants to haul for us. And, uh, We'll, we'll put one owner operator on, let them decide where they want to haul, what they want to haul, that sort of thing. Um, and we're going to, the, the pros for them is they're not going to have to do any of the billing, any of the uh, having to chase after getting the checks or anything. They don't have to wait on their money. Um, they'll be able to rate right from the get go. Uh, every Friday, we'll send out a settlement, which will be a, probably an ACH deposit um, of everything that they made throughout the week, minus uh, minus their fuel. And like if they had to put tires or anything else on the truck, um, we would just subtract that off what they uh, what their settlement is. And then uh, we're going to we're going to take I and mean, they're going to get 85 percent of the load to 90% of the load, depending on how uh, how they want to be paid. Um, but yeah, that, that's kind of the idea right now. If you guys have any questions, I don't know if this chat is on. I've never done this before, so let me, uh, all chats. Yeah, I, if you guys have any questions, feel free to, uh, to write them. I'll, I'll try to answer anything you guys have. But uh, yeah, the idea is is to try to put at least one owner operator on here in uh, in February, and then try to add. My goal is to get five of them on this year, um, and really start to build the account that way. Um, like I said, one truck making three hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, it'll make it. But it's not it's not gonna be all profit. That's pretty much impossible. Not unless you found some sort of freight that uh you're the only person that can haul and uh and no one else knows about it. But uh otherwise we're we're just gonna be looking pretty much uh like I said, to put that owner operator on, let them run. Um they're gonna get to choose where they wanna run to, what they wanna run. Um the whole idea is Let's say they leave out uh, the beginning of the week on a Monday or Tuesday. They load up. Let, let's say, perfect scenario, they're out of Tennessee, which I doubt that'll happen. But let's say they're out of Tennessee, and they're going to load up out of Smyrna uh, first thing Monday morning. And let's say they're delivering to Dallas, Texas. Well, we're going to put on a dispatcher, and they will let the dispatcher know when they're loaded on Monday and when they expect to deliver in Dallas and where they want to go. So let's say they want to run, I don't know, up into, oh hell, let's say Nevada. They want to run over to Nevada. So 
they're going to tell our dispatcher that, look, we're going to deliver. Well, he'll deliver or she'll deliver uh, uh, Tuesday afternoon. Would like to load up Tuesday night, if possible, going over to uh, Dallas. I'm going over to Nevada somewhere because that's just the direction that they want to go to. And we will start, our dispatcher will start looking for the load to get them out that direction. Um, and then if they can, we'll, we'll let them know what loads we have found and they can pick and choose whatever one they want to haul. If there is, or if there isn't, we will say, we'll just tell them, look, there's nothing going out that way from Texas. Um, we found something in Louisiana. You can run out and pick that up going over there. Or we found something in the Arizona from Texas, gets you in that vicinity, but it's not perfect. We will give them the option, try to shoot over five, six, seven loads, as many as possible that we find. Let them pick, and the faster they pick, the faster we can call on the loads and get them booked. That way no one else books them first. And that's kind of the kind of the goal, giving, giving the owner-operator 100% freedom to do and go anywhere they want to go. They don't have to worry about uh, they don't have to worry about finding loads. They don't have to worry about billing the loads. They will just turn around and send us the bill of ladings. Um, we will bill them. We'll wait the 30 days for the uh, for the checks to come in. We will uh, we will pay for all the insurances. Obviously, whatever the insurance increases will uh, will be just deducted <clears throat> evenly out of the four weeks a month. So let's say your insurance is, it increases the insurance by $1,000 to sign the person on. They'll pay 250 a week uh, towards the insurance. Um, but again, this is kind of my idea. I haven't ever hired an owner operator. I've never really even looked into owner operators. So if, if you guys think of think it's stupid or, or you think of better ways of doing it just just let me know i'd love to i'd love to hear from you guys and what you think um would be the best way to go about getting owner operators and that that uh, what what would be if you were to sign on what what would be the best scenario for you um because like i said it's just my ideas i i want to run it to where uh the other drivers um, pretty much get as much freedom as possible. Um, look, they don't they don't have to run week to week. They could run six months out of the year. It doesn't matter. Uh, it's all their income. Um, so you, you, you pretty much get to run your own company without having any of the stress of running your own company. Uh, that's kind of my idea and kind of the way I want to try to run it. Um, yeah, I mean... We can we can provide you guys with access to the load board, but then I mean it, it, it's really up to up to you guys or, or whoever the owner operator is how how they want to run it. Um, if uh, I mean that the, they'll have access to ev you guys will have access to everything. Uh, like I said, like on the load board and stuff like that. If if you want to look and find your own loads, fine. That by all means you can. Um, but again, you'll just have to let our dispatcher know what load you want. The dispatcher can call on it. And obviously, our dispatcher is going to try to do their best to negotiate the rate up as much as possible. Um, we will shoot you over the dispatch sheet so you'll see the actual numbers that the load's paying. Um, like I always say, always ask for more money. So if, if a load's paying $2,000, um, we're, we're going to always try to negotiate that up to $2,200, dollars $2,500. Uh, we're always going to try to get as much as possible because we're, we're making 10 to 15%. And so... 10 to 15% of 2,500 is much better than 10 to 15% of $2,000. So it's in our interest for the company wise to try to negotiate the rates as high as possible as well. Um, but yeah, that that's kind of, yeah, 
uh, Alex Wolf, yeah, Central Dispatch. Um, that, that that's one of the places we uh, that that's one of the places we we get loads from. Uh, sounds like you're starting a trucking company. That that is the goal. We have uh, I have two trucks now. Um, the goal is by the end of the year to have five um, owner operators on, which would give us seven trucks total. Um, again, I'm, I'm just starting out, so I don't know, uh, I don't know it perfectly. Um, so it's going to be a little bit of a learning experience. That's why we're just starting with one more truck and, and slowly adding, I know how to book, um, my trucks and, and keep me loaded and keep my other truck loaded and stuff like that. So it's, it's really not going to be much different than, uh, than I guess doing that other than I won't have any control over where you want to go. Um, you can go anywhere in the country, haul any type of cars. Um, so that's in, in that aspect, I, I won't control. Like if, if we have, if we have, uh, our own freight, um, when, when my dealers like, like the guys that like to buy up here in bell camp, Maryland, when, when we have cars up here, if one of my owner operators wants to run up here and grab one of these loads, look, I'm not going to charge you 15% because you're doing me a solid by helping me keep my customers happy. And, uh, I will, we'll probably charge you 10% instead of the, uh, instead of the 15. So you'll make more money. And I keep my, uh, uh, only full loads you're trying to do, right? Um, actually it, it doesn't matter. Um, if, if it's an owner operator that you got a three car wedge or you got a 10 car stinger, um, you want to make big money coming out of like New York hauling snowbirds down to Florida. Um, when we used to do it, we got 800 to 900 a car. Um, it's been years since we've been up there, but if you want to pick up one, two, three, four, all the way up to nine cars heading down to Florida at 800 a piece, I mean, 10 cars, one direction, that's 8,000 bucks. Look, you probably never get 10. <coughs> Sorry, still a little sick. You'll probably never get 10 snowbirds on just because they all like to drive Mercedes and Lexuses and stuff like that. Um, but, I mean, just easy math, $800 a car, 10 cars, it's $8,000 one way. Uh, it's roughly, what, 12, 1,300 miles total. Um, it's not a bad trip. I used to do it all the time in a week. Um, we would tell, we'd usually do for something like that. Um, we would do, uh, we would tell them, look, we're going to do three pickups. Uh, this is the Walmart we're going to be at, at such and such a time in Buffalo. This is the Walmart we're going to be at, at such and such a time in Rochester. And this is the Walmart we're going to be at such and such a time in Syracuse. You'd load up all your cars in three stops and then start running down to Florida we would always try to book uh, to one side of Florida or the other when we did that. And uh, I'm interested in running North Carolina to Chicago all the time with a Stinger truck. If that's what you're interested in, we will, and you wanted to sign on, we would do everything we could to uh, find the freight for you. Uh, like I said, I can't guarantee running up to Chicago and running down into North Carolina is a, steady run i've never really looked into that run we don't run chicago personally um <clears throat> but if you wanted to run up that way <clears throat> and the and the works there we would find it um and yeah we we use everything from central dispatch um we also call all the uh, dispatchers that we know for each of the either rail yards or ports or uh or the plants or anything like that. Um, we, we would do our best to try to make sure we, uh, we, we kept you full in the direction you want as much as possible. Um, that would be a, a lane we would have to look into a little bit, uh, Chicago to North Carolina, but I'm, I'm sure it's doable. I mean, Chicago to Maryland is a daily run. Uh, oh, North Cali. I'm sorry. Is that is that we said North Cali or North Carolina? I don't know how to get back to where the there they are. Hey, look at that. Let me scroll up. Um, 
you were trying to run North Cali to Chicago. Okay. Yeah. We would be able to find you work, uh, out of Cali. Um, <clears throat> I've, I've never been out to California. I've never even vacationed out there. So I don't know that way at all. But we would, uh, again, it would be just getting a hold of all the companies that have the freight. And we, we've we got, same thing we do with us. We got our call list of all the other companies that have the new car freight, whether it's from California there, um, Tesla's or I'm, I don't really know what hauls out of there, but uh, we we would we would definitely find out. Like I said, this is not something that will be starting tomorrow, but yeah, some somebody like uh, I mean, if if you wanted to run Alex out of California, that is easily something we would start looking and start trying to get a hold of all of the companies that are out there that ship uh, cars back and forth. Um, because that way, once we have numbers for people, we just call them directly. We don't try to search the uh, the load boards to see what's posted. Because a lot of times, like like what I haul out to what uh, what I haul out to Maryland, Virginia, North Carolina, stuff like that, out of Smyrna, out of Spring Hill, um, none of that's posted online usually, unless it's overflow. Um, that that's just all we've over the years gotten to know who dispatches <clears throat> through Hanson and Adkins, through Moore, through um, United, all all those type of companies. Um, we've just gotten to know them over the years, and we just call them directly and uh, ask what what they have heading out in the direction we want to haul to, uh, which would be the same same sort of thing we would try to do coming out of California. Um, that is a, uh, a, I know there's a lot of freight that comes out of California and, uh, I'm, I'm sure it's, it's, well, I've seen some of it going into like Florida and that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, I'm currently running that route three times a month with an eight car setup. Yeah. That, uh, if, if you're currently running it, then, then you already know, um, I guess who to talk to out that direction and uh if if you know who you're hauling for I, I don't know is it your is it your personal truck or are you uh are you a company driver for a company if it, if you're a company driver then i would say just uh you, you could just let us know who you're already hauling for we could probably get you the exact same freight in your own personal truck um if it's your own personal truck um not to shoot myself in the foot but uh, un unless you just don't want the hassle of trying to find the I'm trying to uh, build the freight and do all the behind the scenes paperwork anymore, I would say keep hauling it and keep making the money the way you are. Um, but if if that if you just don't want to do the billing and that sort of stuff, then yeah, by all means, you're you're more than welcome to sign on with us. Uh, and and we would we would handle all the billing. Uh, we have a lady in the office now that that does all the billing, does all the uh, paperwork. She makes most of the phone calls on trying to uh, to figure out uh, where where our money is if people aren't paying. Um, right now, I do most of the actually I do pretty much 100 percent of the dispatching. But uh, the first truck or two, it would it would still be me doing your guys dispatching for the most part. Um, unless, it, unless we got real busy. I mean, if we're doing, uh, like if you got somebody that wants to run Texas into Texas and they're doing a pickup delivery, pickup delivery every day, I, I can't, I can't do that personally. We would, we're going to hire on, we've already been talking to a person that, uh, uh, they get loads from central dispatch and we do door to door private customers that, that, that is good freight, um, door to door. If, if that's what you like doing, um, we, I just personally, we, we got tied in with uh, some dealers. So we, we ended up kind of going more to the, uh, full loads for us specifically. Um, but yeah, door to door, if you like doing it, that it's great money. 
um, usually a dollar, dollar plus a mile cars. Um, well, I, I would say 85 cents to probably like a dollar, ten, dollar, fifteen per mile per car is a very it is what we would try to charge doing door to door there. It, it, it can be tedious. Um, like when we did snowbirds, I don't know how many people would always turn around and just say, well, you know, I, I was going to bring the car out to you first thing this morning, but uh, I had a doctor's appointment or, oh, uh, well, I'm at the golf course right now. It'll be a couple hours before I got out to you. Uh, we actually ended up putting in our contracts that uh, the days we're going to be delivering and picking up from people that uh, they they need to have the entire day ready for us to deliver or pick up. And we would give them a time between usually uh, 8 a.m. and noon and noon to 6 um, for deliveries. Uh, we, we would try to give them a roundabout in that area. And, uh, but we always told them that, look, you, you have, you have to keep it wide open for us to uh, be able to get in there and get out. And we charged uh, $90 an hour for sitting. Um, we would give them usually the first 15, 20 minutes. If they haven't shown up yet, then, uh, then we, we charged them 90 bucks right, right from the get go. Um, and we always did that because look, we always call when we're, at least a half hour out. Usually we try to give an hour call out. Cause like I said, like if, uh, I, I don't know Chicago very well, so I'm going to use Florida as an example. We would try to book to like the East I mean the West coast of Florida. And we would do, we would do our pickups. Like I said earlier, um, Buffalo, Rochester, Syracuse. But then once we picked up in Buffalo, Rochester, Syracuse, we would tell the people that we are, we're going to be doing a delivery. And usually it was Tampa, uh, Sarasota, Fort Myers, and Naples. We picked a Walmart in all four of those. And it was up to them to get to the closest, uh, to, to go to one of the closest delivery points. Uh, we didn't go literally door to door or house to house or anything like that. You just, it, it, it takes too long to... You figure by the time you get you get stopped or you, you find a place to stop. Uh, yeah, I would love to do full loads for the same money we get for private customers. Huh. Yeah. <coughs> Sorry. Yeah, we all would. Oh, man, that'd be great. I'd be driving a brand new truck every year if I could uh, if I could get uh, full load. I mean, uh, private customer rate for full loads. That'd be amazing. Um, but. Yeah, it, it just by by time you find a place to park, by time you pull your ramps, move your decks, get the car off, get your paperwork signed, get your check or cash, however they're paying, and then turn around and uh, put everything back and get back on the road. You lose an hour at every stop, and to do nine stops, it's nine hours um, right there. It it takes too long. Um, <clears throat> so we always tried to do. It's like I said, we did our couple pickups, our couple stops, and then uh, we never really got any customers that bought out of Florida up in New York when we were up there. But uh, usually I'd run into the Tampa port, the Jacksonville port, something like that. And I deliver somewhere around uh, Virginia, the northern part of North Carolina area. Um with, with a full load of new cars and uh, it didn't pay great. And I, and, and I don't even really remember the rates, but I'm just guessing probably 18 to 2,400 running up that direction. Um, we w- we would run up that way and, and really we just used that cause that paid for the entire fuel for the trip. So you'd turn around and make, um, uh, well, we'd do nine cars, $800, that's uh, that's what seventy two hundred seventy one hundred give or take, plus uh, let's say another two thousand coming back. So you did ninety one hundred nine thousand dollars a turn, uh, in in a week. It was a great run. Uh, we loved it, but I just I couldn't handle New York anymore. I ended up moving to Tennessee. 
I don't miss it at all. I love where I live. But uh, yeah, that, that's just kind of for me that that's kind of what uh, the, the rate and the route we're, we're looking at going. Um, <clears throat> full full car load. It's easy. Um, it's not nearly as aggravating, uh, but also the money's not. Excuse me, not as good. Um, your your door to door, fantastic money, high aggravation. I mean, realistically, you're you're going between I would say seven and nine customers every trip. That is seven to nine people that can be very angry at you. Um, and 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 it happens often. Um, you're you you show up 15 minutes late, they want to freak out or. Or you can't give them. Well, what time are you going to be here? Ah, uh, sometime between noon and six. Well, you you can't get a better time than that. Well, no, not really. And we we used to do that all the time. Uh, we deal with that all the time. They well, you you can't tell me like two, three o'clock. I got plans for today. Well, I'm I'm glad you do. But uh, we used to always ask them. Well, what's the traffic in? We'd be delivering in Naples. We'd go. What's the traffic in Jacksonville? Well, I've got no idea. I'm nowhere near Jacksonville. We turn around and say, yeah, neither are we. We have no idea what traffic is going to be like. So that that's kind of the way we played it with uh, door-to-door. Uh, dealerships, same sort of thing, um, except at the end of the day, at the end of the week, you might have three to four customers that you dealt with all week long. It's not bad. Um, but, yeah, like I said, we're going to be hiring on anybody that wants to run anywhere from a three-car wedge. Um, Again, you can run anywhere you want to run, uh, but hauling three cars on a three-car wedge, I'm going to try to, uh, I'll try to explain to you or help you to run profitable freight. It might not be, <coughs> it might not be what you want to run. You you may want to run, uh, let's say, Cal, North Cali to Chicago. Well, that's a long run, but at eight, nine hundred bucks, three cars, let's say nine hundred dollars, that's twenty seven hundred dollars. I don't exactly know the mileage, but I would assume it's probably sixteen to eighteen hundred miles going out, hauling three cars, you're going broke. Um, and, and I would try to explain that to you, uh or or to them. Um, if you're hauling a seven car unit. A eight car unit, a nine car unit, a 10 car unit. We would try to help you <clears throat> get the best freight in the areas you want to run to make you as most money as possible because it is in our best interest for you to make as much money as you possibly can. Um, because the more money you make, the more money we make. The more money you make, the faster I get to that $300,000 at the end of the year to go buy a brand new truck, um, which is what this whole uh, aspect that, that we're going through is, uh, is is based on, is, look, I, I took $5,000, and I want to show how it's possible to make $300,000. Now, again, it, it might not work out. Um, right now, in theory, yeah, it would work out, but... In practicality, we all know real world uh, changes things. Um, so whether we actually can or can't make it to $300,000, we'll see at the end of the year. I would like to sometime in December uh, take you guys with me. Um, and we are going to travel. We will definitely go to Cottrell. We'll definitely go to Wallimo. And we'll go to Boydston. And we will spec out trucks. At all three locations, we will see what is going to be the best dollar uh, or the, the the best option. Um, it's going to be a ten car. Um, I know a lot of people like the uh, the quick loaders. I like stacking cars, um, so it it will be a ten car unit. Um, and we're we're going to go to all three manufacturers and talk to them uh, and and spec out a truck and then. At the end of the day, we will pick a truck, and and, and I don't know. We we, we may even I, I've I've been thinking about pretty much letting you guys 
decide the color scheme, paint job, stuff like that. Um, maybe towards the end of the year, if it, if it is going to work out, we will, uh, have you guys submit some designs and some ideas and, uh, I'll, I'll put them up on here and maybe we'll do a poll, let you guys vote and whoever, uh, whoever's uh, idea gets the best votes or gets the most votes, that'll be the truck we order. Um, so yeah, that, that's just kind of what we're, what we're thinking about doing this year that that's kind of my theory on trying to get to three hundred thousand dollars um i'm gonna run this truck that i'm in right now um we're gonna try to put on five owner operators that's the goal i mean heck if it works out great um we may end up putting more on it if more people even want to join uh but right now it's all up in the air we're just trying something new trying to go about this in a, in a different manner. Um, we're going to try to run this to where uh, it suits you guys the best. Uh, I'm just checking to see if there's any more comments that uh, that I didn't miss. Uh, we're going to try to do this to where it suits you guys absolutely the best, makes you guys the most money, which is going to at the same time make us the most money. Um, try to make it as easy as possible. And uh, we're going to, I guess that that's pretty much where the way we're going to run it. Um, that's all I have right now. Uh, do you guys have any other questions for me? Um, if you do, I'll, I'll sit down here for another minute or so. If you guys uh, give you guys time to write some questions. If not, guys, I appreciate you uh, tuning in today and feel free. Oh, um in the next vlog or two, I'm going to post my uh, contact information uh, when, when we are looking at starting to do some interviews and getting people uh, get, getting people signed on if they want to join. Um, we will we will post the ways to get a hold of us um, and then we'll we'll more or less just call you up, do an interview over the phone um, as long as it sounds good with us as long as uh as long as our insurance i guess doesn't uh doesn't say no uh for any reason driving record or anything like that or if uh if they do say yes but it's uh what about in-op vehicles you can haul them if you want to um we used to when we first started out. I don't anymore. But yeah, if you guys want to haul in ops, by all means. It again, it's it's your it's your pretty much your business. And for the most part, you're hiring us to just do your billing, uh, collecting your funds and that sort of stuff. Um, and and more, or less, I guess we're kind of being the bank in the aspect of. You're going to have a fuel card uh, to buy your fuel for the entire week. Uh, if, if if you have maintenance that you got to do on your truck, uh, you'll be able to use that card for that as long as it's not over like doing a motor rebuild kind of thing. But uh, doing tires, doing brakes, hydraulic hoses, um, for the most part, I would say not major like $10,000 plus bills. Uh, you're going to have a company debit card. I mean, uh, like a company credit card to use to, to handle all that. Um, and then just pretty much whatever you spend, we're going to take it off your, uh, off your settlement at the end of the week. Um, so let, let's say you spend $3,500 throughout the week, you turn around and made $7,000. Do you think it's practical with an eight, nine car, a 10 car because of winching second deck? Um, I don't know. Um, I know I've seen a lot of people haul in ops. Um, I would say if, if you're going to like Copart or IAA, they load you, I think, or at least they used to. It has been five years since I've been into one. Um, but I'm pretty sure they load you and we would good chat. I have to go 
put my poultry vest on a load of Hey, good luck in Memphis. Have fun with that. I appreciate you tuning in. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty sure they load you. And then uh, for us, we would just make sure that where the cars are going to, um, they're going to have a forklift to unload you unless you do want to winch, then you, you can, I guess. I mean, I, I'm not going to tell you, no, you can't, but, uh, again, it, it's the freight you want to haul. So if, if you want to haul in ops and, uh, I would assume either delivering to people that are rebuilding them or going to the ports and delivering them, uh, to going overseas. If that's what you want to do, that's what you want to do. You can haul anything you want. Um, we'll always let you know when we have work and where we have it personally for our dealerships. If you want to grab it, you can, there's nothing saying you have to, um, but, uh, yeah, doing, doing the in ops again, that's, that, that is something very doable. Any advice for a new car, um, new car as in what, like hauling, hauling new cars, um out of like the plants or rail yards um if, if that's what you mean i'm just gonna start right now if that's what you mean uh yes i would say uh look them over very closely uh a new car hauler um well it it is a very profitable business out here um you you can make it it is it's not easy i don't know what what type of uh truck are you using what is your experience dealing with receivables how long is average collections besides cod um <clears throat> most of our dealerships uh that we deal with they pay by friday um usually whatever whatever we haul throughout the week and we get turned into them the, the bill of ladings throughout the week um uh, monday we we leave a bill of lading at the dealership um Monday we uh, is, is the day we do all of our billing. Um, our dealerships pay by Friday usually is when they send their checks out every week, so four checks a month. Um, new car wise, um, we don't do any of their quick pay or 15 day or anything like that. All of our stuff is net 30 for the most part, so we sit on it. Uh, that way we can collect the full amount instead of getting five six seven percent taken off in massachusetts running a quick loader um well uh depending on the type of cars you're hauling well first off let, let me let me finish this one real quick um most most of our stuff is i would say probably 70 percent is net 30 and i would say 30 percent is uh is by the next friday um or cod um we like I said, we just don't uh, we just don't hold. Um, I mean, we just don't do any of the quick pay, and we don't factor anything. So we that's why I said I gotta have twenty five thirty thousand dollars sitting there, so I can afford to cover all your fuel, cover maintenance, and sit and wait on the money to show up while I'm paying you um, every week. So. <laughs> you you do you do got to have a halfway decent account sitting there um in, in that aspect okay as for hauling a quick loader like out of uh massachusetts really hauling anywhere is gonna be about the same but uh my biggest advice i would say um not not getting into driving techniques and that sort of stuff but my my biggest advice i would say is always, always, always double and triple check everything you do. Um, when I load, I I have a pattern, and it and my truck is loaded exactly the same way every time. Um, and and I'll tell you my pattern for my truck. I put the first three cars on the one over the head rack, one behind the head rack, and the one on the front top of the trailer. I strap those three cars down completely then i raise my decks and i slide that front one on the uh the trailer all the way forward then i load my next two cars on i strap them down i raise them up 
Then I level all my bottom decks out. I load all four cars on. Then I start at the passenger side behind behind my uh, truck here, the passenger side rear tire on the car, and work all the way down the passenger side, all the way up the driver's side. Then I come over, I grab my height stick, I start lowering my decks down. I lower all my decks down, I pin all my decks. I grab my height stick, and then I start at the front corner of the truck, and I take my heights from the front corner over my head rack all the way back to the last car on. I take a height out of everything. I don't care if I'm hauling all Nissan Sentras. I use my height stick, and I check them every time, no matter what. The reason I do that is now that allows me to turn around and walk all the way down the side of the trailer while I'm checking my heights to make sure everything's down to height. I'm checking pins. I'm checking wheel straps. I'm checking my decks. I'm checking my gaps between the cars. And uh, other cars and the decks. Um, I get to the back end of my trailer. That's when I slide my ramps in. I think I got. You, I, I had a phone call come through. Um, I think I'm back now. Um, I, I slide my decks in. Then I walk up the passenger side of my truck. I mean the driver's side of my truck. I check all of my uh, straps and pins on that side. Then I go back over to the passenger side, and I put my height stick in the side of my head rack. Then I walk back to the driver's side, and I leave. That's kind of my pattern here. That's kind of how I do it. Um, that that works for me, and I think you guys need to do it. Well, find a pattern and do it your way, <clears throat> but work your pattern the same way every single time, no matter what. I'm going to have to go in one second. So last question here. Pay to the subcontractors based on a weekly pay. What happens with a receivable if it goes bad? If it goes bad, it goes bad. That's not your fault. You hauled the work. You will always be paid for it. Um, that is up to me and my uh, company and attorney to go after collecting the receivables. Uh, we, we've had that happen not often, but it does happen. Uh, but, guys, I got to go. My wife's called. Um, so I'm going to call her back, but thank you for tuning in. I'll do this again. Uh, if you guys like it, give me a thumbs up. If you do subscribe to the channel as well, if, uh, if you like them, I mean, if, if you like the, uh, videos I put out, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, again, give me a thumbs up and, uh, guys, I'll see you guys later. I'm going to call my wife back real quick. Thank you very much.